Good evening to everyone and welcome to today's session. All DP, AK and many more who are all online, please inform your classmates that the live class has started. <clears throat> I'm supposed to take this session about three days back. I was just preparing for the session and uh, suddenly my second son had a acute abdominal uh, crisis with uh, acute pelvic appendicitis. My second son Abhinav. So I had to rush him to the hospital and uh, on CT abdomen there was a pelvic appendix. Pelvic appendicitis doesn't present with a classical McBurney's point pain. Uh, but uh, typically it will be like a vague pain with a lot of nausea. So you need to have a high index of suspicion, especially 11 year old boy with abdominal pain. There can't be any other reason than appendicitis unless proven otherwise. So that is a old clinical aphorism. So in emergency we have done uh, laparoscopic uh, appendectomy. And uh, last two days I was just sitting like a patient attendant in the um, SICU and uh, today he recovered and uh, came back home and he said that uh, hey pops go back your students will be waiting for you I took two days of your time and uh, now it is time that you go back to your students so next session I will present you the pelvic appendicitis of Abhinav Bharadwaj um, how probably only ultrasound we would have done we would have missed the diagnosis so that's the reason always I say history is the thumb with a high clinical index of suspicion and uh, if your suspicion is strong then all investigations will fall into the line so with God's grace and all your blessings uh, the kid has recovered from a laparoscopic uh, appendicectomy which is done by my own student uh, who like you was attending coaching way back in 2004 Dr. Karnakar Reddy was my student um, he said that sir uh, those days early morning we used to attend uh, three hours of your class uh, in Warangal uh, watching the video so today I have a chance to operate on your own son so I said that that is a great uh, uh, advantage by being a teacher so anesthesia was given by one Dr. Murtaza who is also my student a uh, few years back so always uh, uh, to be your teacher today I, wa I want to once more tell you some of you are going to be the top surgical gastroenterologists some of you are going to be oncosurgeons some of you are going to be top cardiologists you're all such great luminary clinicians today sitting preparing for the exam so every day you think in that spirit and go to the exam with that positive brimming and clear all the gaps in your preparation that is the whole purpose so doctor with that preamble let's make the great beginning of the today's class so uh, every Sunday there will be a grand test of 300 MCQs. You will get subject wise how was your performance score analysis. So that every Sunday you will be knowing how good you are doing. And uh, either Sunday afternoon or on Monday I will take up the 300 questions of the Sunday paper and do the discussion right so this is the last Sunday's question paper so full scale grant test. let's quickly do the discussion those who have attended the full scale grant test this discussion looks normal speed those who are joining uh, extempo without attempting the Sunday question paper online test this looks little fast but uh, we shall we shall make a practice every Sunday to take a test. So doctor, totally we have 65 NEET PG full scale grant tests in offering. 
with discussion, with ranking, with assessment, everything. December 1st to December 31st. Every day we have one full scale grant test and a discussion. Until then, every Sunday, uh, totally 65 grant tests and discussion for the full scale NEET PG mock test. So please take opportunity to enroll for this mock test and discussions uh, at onlinemvbs.com. Now, Dr. Uh, which muscle is inserted into the dorsal digital expansion of the hand? Except, except break your radii, it's absolutely right. Keep punching your answers, doctor. Lumbrical, Sitarosche, Excelsa, Digitorum, they are all inserted into dorsal digital expansion of the hand. So how is it formed? It is the tendon of the extensa digitorum, the dorsal digital expansion is being formed. Into that, the lumbricals, interosseae, they are all inserted. Brachyradius is attached to the lateral side of the distal end of the radius at the base of the styloid process. Styloid process, not to the dorsal digital expansion is what you need to remember. Good to see Dhanalakshmi, Irfan, Gautami, Auditi and many more, Rahul online. Please inform your friends also that Sunday grant test discussion is a little, little late, but still we'll, uh, we are taking up for a discussion. Which muscles are attached to the coracoid process of the scapula? Short head of the biceps, not long head. Coracobrachialis and pectoralis minor. They are all attached to the coracoid. Whereas the long head of the biceps brachii, it is attached to the supraglenoid tubercle. Above the, in the glenoid area, you have the supraglenoid tubercle to which the long head of the biceps brachii is attached, is what you need to remember. With regard to the lumbricals, Typically, what is the function of lumbricals, doctor? You put your fingers like this, like this. So what is happening? These are phalanges, these are metacarpals. Metacarpophalangeal joint, metacarpophalangeal joint flexion. Metacarpophal, these are phalanges, these are metacarpals. Metacarpophalangeal joint flexion and extension of the interphalangeal joint, interphalangeal joint. That is what you see with lumbricans. That is the function of lumbricans. And from there are the lumbricals arising. They are arising from the tendons of flexor digitorum profundus. All of them are not bipinnate. You should remember, all lumbricals are not bipinnate. First and second are unipennate, third and fourth are usually bipennate among the lumbricals. That's what you need to remember. Once more, Doctor, every full scale grant is at the end of solving 300 questions, you should identify 10 to 12 topics. Go back to the online MBBS.com video library and do the revision. That's how every Sunday test you should become. Stronger, stronger, stronger in December, December 1st to December 30th. Every day when we have a grant test discussion, grant test discussion, you should be scoring 70 to 75 percent correct. At least uh, out of 300, you should be in a position to score more than 240 correctly. That is the point we should aim for. Okay. Which structure opens into the prostatic urethra? Prostatic gland, prostatic utricle, ejaculatory duct, they all open into prostatic urethra. Bhaskar Dutta rightly says, option A drains into membranous urethra. Very good. So, doctor, these are the bulbo-urethral glands. It actually opens into spongy urethra, about 2.5 centimeters below membranous. That is the point where the bulbo urethral glands open. 
is what you have to remember. Which neuron of the cerebellum forms the inhibitory synapse with the Purkinje cells? Golgi cells, basket cells, telate cells. They all form the inhibitory synapses with the Purkinje cells, but not granule cells. The parallel fibers of the axons of the granular cells, they form excitatory synapses, not inhibitory. That's the point you need to remember. First of all, the idea is go back to onlinebbs.com video library and do a revision of all cerebellar histology. That should be the goal. Right now, I mean, over here, galactoria is typically seen with pituitary adenoma. Hemorrhagic lesions in the mammillary bodies are typical of Wernicke's encephalopathy. Rat case pow, which is the Origin for craniopharyngioma is what you need to remember. Anterior hypothalamic nuclei. Each of these hypothalamic nuclei, if you excite them, what will happen? If you destroy them, what will you happen? Favorite MCQ of examiner. If you have done this question wrong, Tasma Jagrata Jagrata. You need to go back and do the revision of hypothalamic nuclei in the online MBBS.com video library. So, doctor, it lead to hyperthermia and hypothalamic nuclei. Now, quickly tell me, doctor, fada fad bolo, kya kya karega each of these nuclei? Suprachiasmatic nucleus. It adjusts the circadian rhythm, stimulation of it, and lesion of it abolish the circadian rhythm. You don't know when is morning, when is afternoon, when is evening. Supra-optic and paraventricular nuclei. Typically, ADH production. So, any lesion of them will lead to diabetes insipidus. Any stimulation of them will release the ADH and increase the water retention, increase blood volume, blood pressure, metabolism. Lateral hypothalamic nuclei. You stimulate, you start eating a lot and you start growing laterally. You start growing laterally because of increased eating. Whenever lateral hypothalamic nuclei are stimulated, is what you need to remember. Any lesion of that can decrease the feeding. Ventromedial nucleus. Stimulation lead to decreased feeding. Lesion lead to increased feeding. Dorsomedial nucleus will lead to sham rage stimulation. And uh, lesion lead to decreased aggression, decreased feeling. And mammillary body, any lesion of it, typically lead to short term memory, is not processed into long term memory. Whatever is short term memory will not be processed into long term memory. If there is a lesion of mammillary bodies, is what you need to remember. So the destruction of the anterior hypothalamic nuclei results in hyperthermia is what you need to basically remember. Once more, stimulation of ventromedial nucleus. What does it lead to? So you should remember it leads to anorexia. Whenever ventromedial nucleus is inhibited, it will inhibit the urge to eat. It leads to emaciation. And any destruction of it will lead to hyperphagia. And the person becomes savage, cannibalistic. He will eat anything that comes his way. Savage behavior. Bilateral lesion of the ventromedial hypothalamic nuclei, what does it lead to? It leads to obesity and savage behavior. Now, doctor, posterior hypothalamic nuclei, what does it lead to? It lead to inability to thermoregulate is what you need to remember. Supraoptic paraventricular nuclei, it lead to diabetes insipidus. Just before we discuss. Sometimes in the full scale grand test, purposefully we will try to bleed you four to five wrongs on a particular topic. Sometimes, even the actual exam also it happens. If you are completely novice to that topic, 
clean bold right so uh, that's the reason doctor all high yield topics 953 topics if you don't have the list please call today only 9000 please call 9000 868356 please do call you have the 953 topic list you should become perfect okay now uh very good audit is always i like uh, the students who are very proactive punching comments that's how we all should read together so audit reminds a supra optic nucleus secretes vasopressin adh that is the reason any destruction of it lead to diabetes insipidus is what you need to remember from today on but i planned evening i will take two hours usmle style uh, clinical binet image based questions the trend that we have started we will have a discussion morning i will take one more two hour live broadcast whenever possible and we will try to discuss around 60 to 70 all india pg medical entrants there is about 30000 mcqs topic wise we will take up and start discussing 60 to 70 questions morning ek do ghante time waisa time pass karenge aur sham pe usmle style image based and uh, uh image based and clinical binet based so every day we will increase our time of live interactive session daily session every sunday we will have a grand test and full scale grand test discussion like this so overall the idea is we should all study together attending coaching is not about uh, i throw some videos some mobile app on you and expect you to study no it doesn't happen whether it's a book or a mobile app it is like uh, a passive medium every day you should be challenged with about 60 to 100 questions that is the reason evening we will have usmle image based clinical binet based questions morning we will have all india question bank topic wise classified 30000 questions already they are all discussed by different teachers and available in the online mbbs.com video library still i want to personally discuss i always feel there is nobody in the world who can more passionately discuss the question bank whatever the subject of course there are passionate teachers no doubt about it every teacher has in their own style of teaching appreciable but since we have been discussing discussing for the past 20 years we feel that every day teacher becomes a student sit along with you study along with you for about a couple of hours then you will get that motivation to study so that's the reason only video library doesn't do video library has no value only when it is live online daily interactive together according to a schedule if we are moving forward every day wow may june july august september october november december wow eight months of time is there doctor so i need to bring that habit for you every day solve about 100 questions listen 100 question discussion then go back and then another couple of hours take time to review the video library more than enough for cracking the entrance exam so what is due to thiamine deficiency varniki encephalopathy easy question biscuit question Would spinal cord levels contain brachial plexus? Cervical cord, cervical cord, C5 to C8. It gives rise to brachial plexus. That's the reason the ventral horns are very thick. In case of the cervical cord, is what you need to remember. Plasma sodium one thirty five 
plasma glucose 400 blood urea 120 what is the hospitality very common question you should crack this question so basically doctor what is the formula for the hospitality you should take the anions so sodium plus all anions so 140 into 2 plus glucose divided by 18 urea divided by 2.8 so typically it will be 280 plus 5 plus 5 that is 290 milli osmoles per kg is the normal osmolarity and you should know the formula for calculating the osmolarity is most important thing right so uh, yes doctor let me change yeah the membrane potential of the cardiac muscle cells is most affected by even a small change in which ion so you should remember always resting membrane potential is decided by serum serum potassium concentrations whereas action potential and the spike is decided by the serum sodium that is what you have to emphatically remember dark now what statement is incorrect contraction against the constant load with the approximation at the ends of the muscle is called as isotonic contraction a contraction can occur without any decrease in the length of the muscle and muscles can lengthen while doing the work work is after all what force into length so increase in length is increase in work simple right so doctor accordingly the muscle contracts there can be a concentric contraction that will bring movement muscle elongates which is called eccentric contraction eccentric contraction as what you can see here right then the muscle contracts but there is no change in length which is called isometric one of the favorite questions of the exam doctor isometric versus isotonic typically you find isometric contractions in the anti-gravity muscles and isotonic isotonic the tension remains the same muscle shorten and it is used for movement that is isotonic anti-gravity isometric that's what you should remember isometric versus isotonic you should know all the differences the length of the muscle isometric constant the tension of the muscle increases with isometric not in isotonic Sarcomere shortens, but it will do that by stretching those which do not. Whereas isotonic may, shortening of individual sarcomeres will add up to the shortening of the whole muscle. That is isotonic. There is no external work done in isometric because work is forced into length. If the length doesn't change, work doesn't happen. So no external work done in isometric, whereas work, work is done in case of isotonic. So trying to lift heavy weights when the weights are not actually lifted, you are trying to lift, but you are really not lifting, that, that is isometric. Whereas you have lifted, that is isotonic. That's what you have to basically remember. Okay, doc. So, will you is stable ko up freeze karega? Freeze karna. Computer mahodai ko bolo. Freeze karo. Kyunki definitely puchne wala question item hai. Mere bhai. Definitely exam is going to ask you this question. So, if you have not yet enrolled in our, these are all our Sunday full scale grant test questions. If you have not yet enrolled in our full scale grant test, please call 9000.
868-356. Today only take an enrollment also tell your friends. There is nobody in the world who offers 65 grantors online along with a discussion with the teacher. Right? With your comfort of sitting in the home for a small throwaway price nobody will offer along with about 3000 uh, video lectures online video library so now everyone is in the covid phase no one has money to pay even if money is there we don't want to pay so but at the same time this is the best time to buy the um, most discounted even organizations will run whatever by the price first get as many students as possible to enroll that is the race in which every coaching center everybody is there not just because of any charity so that is the reason take opportunity to give a call to our helpline and subscribe to 65 full scale online grantors with discussion along with 3000 video lectures okay doc now what is an excitotoxin? Glutamate is an excitotoxin. So if you look at the glutamate receptors, metabotropic, inotropic, NMDA, NMDA receptors, and methyl D aspartate receptors, in that sodium calcium channels will fall and AMPA receptors. These are all fundamentally the glutamate receptors is what you need to remember. In a healthy individual with total lung volume of 6 liters, one of the favorite questions of the examiner, the amount of the oxygen which is present in uh, the amount of oxygen present in the lungs at the end of a normal expiration, how much? So you should remember, doctor, around 400 ml, 400 ml. So we have a inspiratory reserve volume, tidal volume, expiratory reserve volume, residual volume, inspiratory capacity, functional residual capacity. So you should know normal values. What is the definition of each of these volumes in spirometry? You have to be 100% sure, doctor. You have to freeze this important table. So once more, let me revise for you emphatically because every entrance you go, this is the most high yield topic. <clears throat> Inspiratory reserve volume, 3 liters. Tidal volume, half liter. Expiratory reserve volume, 1.1 liter. Residual volume, 1.2 liters. Then the vital capacity, how do you get it? Inspired laser volume plus tidal volume plus expert laser volume will give you vital capacity. It is 4.6 liters. Inspiratory capacity 3.5 liters. How do you get that? Inspired laser volume plus tidal volume will give you inspiratory capacity, which is 3.5 liters. Functional residual capacity. Combine expert laser volume and residual volume together to get the functional residual capacity, which is 2.3 liters. And total lung capacity is 5.8, which comes by combining inspired reserve volume plus tidal volume plus expired reserve volume plus residual volume. Residual volume is what is called as total lung capacity. Itna batti varne wala cheez hai, doctor. Jo batti marna padega, batti marna hi padega. There is no other go, right? So, topper or woofer, doesn't matter. Everybody, what is must to mug, revise, reproduce. There is no other way, right? Only until entrance exam. Once you become clinicians, there are very few things to remember. More common sense, more practice. Until entrance exam, yes, there are. To crack the entrance exam, there are a good number of uh, things that you have to mug. You have to become strong and you need to present. Right, Doc? So, FEV1 normally is 3 liters. I'll try to move on. 
F E V one is three liters. Normal F V C is four liters. F E V one by F V C is seventy five percent. That is a normal scenario, doctor. Whereas when do you call restrictive? F E V one from three liter if it decreases. F V C from four liter it also decreases. But as a ratio, it will increase eighty three percent. as a ratio it will increase because the denominator increases more than the numerator the denominator decreases more than the nu numerator both of them decrease but denominator decreases more decrease that's the reason as a ratio it will be more if it is a restrictive lung disease whereas in obstructive fev1 is decreased significantly numerator fvc not much And F E V one by F E C significantly decreased. Twenty five percent it will become. So you should know normal, restrictive versus obstructive. One of the favorite questions of the examiner. Which will undergo enterohepatic circulation, doctor? Bilirubin is the one. Keep punching the answers. Bilirubin. At what stage of erythropoiesis does hemoglobin appear? Intermediate normoblast. So all these questions, when you take the full-scale grand tests on every Sunday online test, alarm will be running, and uh, we have a very good online uh, mock test interface, new interface that we have uh, added up. So you can go to this site. I will try to take you. Double 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 u dot next meet pg dot com is our uh, only mock test site. Our regular online mbbs dot com you have the entire video library. So here we have the we have introduced the grand test sixty five grand test package. So doctor, if you go to this sixty five grand test. Once you join for our online MBBS.com video library, this mock test series will come as a complement. But sometimes students want uh, students want uh, so uh, some students want to join for mock test alone. For them, we created this. So uh, yeah. So if you go here, here you have the schedule uh, of the mock test, right? So every Sunday, every Sunday there will be a uh, full-scale grand test. But from December onwards, if you take December, every day on December you have all thirty days one full-scale grand test, and there is a three to four hours of discussion. On the grand test, so that is the plan. So, doctor, take every opportunity. Next, need to pg dot com. N e x t. Next, need to pg dot com is a portal which is the uh, attached portal with uh, online mbbs dot com. So, or else you can come to the online mbbs dot com. www dot online mbbs dot com. All the video discussions once more will be placed in online mbbs dot com. Only for taking that grand test, you need to you will be directed. You will get an account opened up in next need pg dot com. Okay, doc. So uh, and we will have a discussion of it. And after the discussion is over, this YouTube video become archived. This PowerPoint will also be available for you to do the retrospective revision. Right now. Immunity is most suppressed in immunity is most suppressed in patients who are taking ACTH therapy because steroids are known to be strong immunosuppressants. SNO, SNO is a pacemaker because it is the one which initiates the impulse at a faster rate. It generates spontaneous impulses. Its activity is increased by sympathetic activity. Parasympathetic activity will decrease its activity. 
Sympathetic vasoconstrictor tone. When will it diminish? So there is something called carotid reflex. So whenever carotid sinus pressure receptors, once there is an increased activity, then sympathetic vasoconstrictor tone become diminished is what you need to remember. Uh, I think the video is frozen, doctor. Two minutes. I restart the video. Stay online, doctor. So welcome back to the session. What is not true about a extra systole in the ventricle? So you should remember extra systoles are those aberrant QRS complexes which are being produced on the ECG. They don't translate into a contraction so that you don't feel I mean, they fail to produce a pulse. So, electrocardiographically, there is a QRS complex produced. It leads to an abnormal QRS complex and it has a tendency to be followed by a compensatory pause is what you need to remember. It does not say anything about any heart ailment. There is no serious heart ailment just because extrasystoles are there on the ECG. So this is a normal systole, QRS, normal systole. This is a ventricular premature beat which presents like a abnormal QRS complex is what you need to remember. So what will you, what do you know about this condition doctor? Most of the times patients are asymptomatic. They may present with palpitations, missed beat, extra beat, etc. Do you need to give an antiarrhythmic? Are you worried that this ventricular premature beat can become a ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation? No, sir. There is no need for giving antiarrhythmics if there is an only isolated VPP. So a lot of times patients come to your OPD saying that, sir, I have a ventricular premature beat because of this excessive QRS complexes. There is nothing to worry about. Even a short run VT also, there is no role for any prophylactic antiarrhythmics because most of these antiarrhythmics by themselves are proarrhythmic in nature if you happen to give it uh, unduly. There is a use by giving beta blockers which will abolish these ventricular premature beats, especially those who are a ST elevation MI, they got discharged at home, they came back to the OP. They brought an ECG. They have shown a ventricular premature beat. For such people, you can give a beta blocker so that you will abolish those VPBs. Similarly, VPBs, if you are worried that they convert into ventricular fibrillation, you can prevent it by using beta blockers. Beta blockers, not antiarrhythmics. Only if there is a sustained VP, more than five ventricular premature beats, Sustained ventricular arrhythmias, then only there is an indication for an antiarrhythmic is what you need to remember. So I leave the literature for you, doctor, um, about ventricular premature beats, one of the favorite questions of the examiner. Very good. RDT is asking, adding a point. VPBs can be seen with oleander poisoning. Oh my God. Is it? I don't know. So arterial pulse pressure how will it be in the femoral artery femoral artery normally it is less than the pulse pressure in the upper iota 
Obviously, upper aorta is close to heart. So, pulse pressure is higher there and uh, lesser in the femoral artery. Blood supply of the liver, 1500 ml. What is the major blood reservoir of the body? Liver sinusoids, abdominal veins, venous plexus of the skin. They are all considered to be the major blood reservoirs. Severe hypoxia lead to a sudden rise of the blood pressure. Patients with lactose intolerance. Why lactose intolerance develop? Because of the inability to split a glycosidic bond, it leads to development of lactose intolerance. The intestinal lactase levels are low. Normally what does lactase? How does it act? It basically break down the 1,4 linkage, beta 1,4 linkage between galactose and glucose which is there in the lactose. So lactose since it is not able to get metabolized that is a whole underlying cause for the lactose intolerance. A couple of six children, all of them show short stature, eyelid droop, muscle weakness, hearing loss. Even mother had such problems. So typically maternal inheritance is associated with mitochondrial inheritance. It is mitochondrial inheritance. Now doctor, spontaneous deamination of certain bases in DNA, it occurs at a constant rate and uh, such deamination can lead to mutations if not repaired. Now the question of the examiner is, which deamination indicated below leads to a mutation in resulting protein if it is not repaired. C to U from cytosine to uracil deamination if it doesn't occur that lead to abnormal protein formation. If a HIV positive individual is placed in monotherapy why the resistance to the antiretroviral drug occur? Because there is a lack of error checking in the DNA, in the RNA polymerase, not DNA, RNA polymerase. That is one of the most important reasons for the antiretroviral drug resistance is what you need to remember. So I leave a little bit of literature for you to review about polymerase chain reaction, which is the favorite topic of examiner. So any mutation in the reverse transcriptase, it alters the deoxynucleoside triphosphate binding pocket, which is mainly responsible for offering the resistance, is what you need to remember. A chronic alcoholic has gone into hypoglycemia. What is the cause of hypoglycemic episodes in case of chronic alcoholic. For that you should know one simple thing. The simple thing is why we don't go into hypoglycemia? We don't go because of the gluconeogenesis. That means in alcoholic something is preventing this gluconeogenesis from happening. That is the reason they go into hypoglycemia. What is preventing gluconeogenesis from happening in alcoholic individual? Very simple. Alcohol is metabolized into acetyl, acetaldehyde and ultimately acetyl-CoA which passes through the citric acid cycle. So when it passes through the citric acid cycle, acetyl-CoA, a lot of NADH is produced. And that lead to a high NADH by NAD plus ratio. And that is a inhibitor of gluconeogenesis. Got it? 
अल्कोहल बन गया एसिटाल डिखेल एसिटाल डिखेल बन गया एसिडाइल कोई एसिडाइल कोई गोन थ्रू द सिट्रिक एसिड साइकिल प्रोड्यूस द लॉट ऑफ एनएडीएच दैट इंक्रीजेस एनएडीएच बाय एनएडी रेशियो दैट एक्ट्स एज अ इनहिबिटर ऑफ ग्लूकोनियोजेनेसिस दैट इज द रीजन if there is no gluconeogenesis alcoholics will go into hypoglycemia is what you need to remember so doctor in all the subject i am going to discuss morning couple of hours live online session we will have a discussion of 30000 mcqs of all india fmg aims Topic wise classified question bank discussion. Sixty questions. I'll give you like a quiz, doctor. We will start from tomorrow with the gynecology obstetrics. There are thousand questions in gynecology obstetrics. Fata fat, fata fat, fata fat. Next to fifteen days, we will finish, right? So every day sixty questions to hundred questions whenever we have energy. And uh, before December thirty first, as many number we will. uh we will try to finish 953 topics in the morning right like morning rounds evening rounds evening a couple of hours we will spend on usmle step 1 step 2 clinical image based questions which are uh, very important clinical binet and image based questions not only for usmle going guys but also for all need pg exam going guys because even our exam also has become more or less like uh, the usmle so this is the plan are you all ready So you have Dr. Burli Bhardwaj all yours morning couple of hours evening couple of hours and there are three thousand video lectures already there in the video library every Sunday grand test discussions on the grand test what else is required for you to become a top and doctor happily sit in the home AC on करो बैठ जाओ discussion में participate करो साथियों के साथ और online MBBS video library में revision करो अगर सीट नहीं मिले तो मैं टीच करना बंद करूंगा ठीक है सो दैट इज द ओनली सीक्रेट ऑफ विनिंग डॉक्टर देर इज नो स्पेशल सीक्रेट एट ऑल इधर ए टीचर और ए गुड फ्रेंड व्हाट इज द रोल ऑफ ए गुड क्लासमेट और ए टीचर द मेन रोल ऑफ देम इज वो भी आपके साथ बैठना है रोज आपके साथ पढ़ाई करना है रोज आपके साथ डिस्कशन करना है रोज अवेलेबल होना है दैट इज मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इट इज नॉट सम वीडियो एप और समथिंग इट इज ऑल अबाउट कॉम्बिनेशन बहुत वीडियो लाइब्रेरी फॉर डूइंग रिट्रोस्पेक्टिव रिविजन एंड ए प्रोस्पेक्टिव लाइव ऑनलाइन कंबाइंड स्टडी दे बहुत अगर हम कंबाइन करें तो दुनिया में कोई भी शक्ति आपको रुकेगा नहीं टॉपर बनने से नाउ डॉक्टर हाइड्रोक्सिलेशन ऑफ द प्रोलीन इन द कोलैजन सिंथेसिस व्हाट इज इट रिक्वायर्ड इट रिक्वायर ऑक्सीजन इट रिक्वायर विटामिन सी विटामिन सी इज द कोएंजाइम फॉर ऑल हाइड्रोक्सिलेशन रिएक्शंस एंड डाइऑक्सीजेनेसिस 40 नैनोमीटर गैप इन बिटवीन द ट्रोपो कोलैजन मॉलिक्यूल इन कोलैजन it serves as a site where which is occupied by what it is occupied by calcium very fundamental question in uh, biochemistry right so i leave the literature for you to do a review of some of the things which don't require a lot of explanation collagen in hyaline cartilage is of type 2 hyaline is the most common type of cartilage and the type of collagen in hyaline cartilage is type 2 two is cartilage you can remember cartilage two hota hai type 2 collagen type 2 collagen so hyaline cartilage is the glass like cartilage found in the ribs found in the nose found in the larynx found in the trachea and there are no nerves no blood vessels in the hyaline cartilage type 2 collagen chondroitin sulfate they are the important components of the hyaline cartilage doctor how you will remember these things is first get yourself challenged by taking a grand test 
that is important whatever be your level of preparation doctor take a grand test of online mbbs.com 300 mcqs ko baith ke kaam karo aapka score aayega maybe 120 130 now no worries but it will give you a report which subjects you have done more wrongs and where are your wrongs etc participate in this live discussion end of it understand okay these are the 10 topics 15 topics i am going to improve go back to the video library and do the revision that's all that's the secret you do that 65 times with our 65 grand tests before december 30 nobody will stop you from winning the entrance exam triple helix where do we see that we see it in collagen keratin of the skin and the nail why do they differ they differ because of the disulfide bond is a differentiator of the skin ka keratin nail ka keratin what are the components of the extra cellular matrix laminin fibronectin collagen they are all the components of the extra cellular matrix not integral so this is the plasma membrane doctor okay plasma membrane now this is the attachment to cytoskeleton here you have an integral this is the fibronectin strand of fibronectin this is the proteoglycan and this is all collagen so this is all the extracellular matrix so you have integral fibronectin collagen laminin they are all components of the extracellular space now what is integral 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 is away from the matrix matrix where you have laminin fibronectin collagen integral is not a component of extracellular matrix so this is the basement membrane these are the epithelial cells these are the integrins doctor whereas here you have proteoglycans collagen laminin this is all matrix here you have the integrin above that you have the epithelial cells so this picture you need to get the clarity so what are integrins panch panktiyon mein bolna integrins kya hota hai integrins hota hai heterodimeric transmembrane glycoproteins heterodimeric transmembrane glycoproteins badhiya iska purpose kya hota hai uske upar hota hai cells uske niche hota hai matrix ye dono ko jodne ke liye taiyar kiya gaya hai integrins ko integrins bind extracellular matrix proteins of the basement membrane and the cells together that is important for embryogenesis tissue development immune response leukocyte trafficking cancer metastasis tissue homeostasis etc 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 is what you need to remember selectins ke bare mein bolo char panktiyon mein selectins are the adhesion molecules and they are present only on the cells of the vasculature so they have a lectin domain isliye inko bolte hain selectin and selectins are important because they are the mediators in the first step during the migration of leukocytes from the blood stream you know whenever information is there leukocytes need to be streamed in that step selectins have a role is what you need to understand basement membrane degeneration who mediates it it is the metalloproteinases which mediate i leave the literature for you all this powerpoint is made available in the online mbbs.com video library no worries elasticity of the corneal layer of the skin what is it due to it is due to keratin it is due to keratin keratinized stratum corneum it is tough strong flexible elastic 
and all that stability is because of the disulfide cross linkages between the keratin molecules is what you need to remember. How is the spindle formed in the dividing cells? Spindle is formed by the tubulin, which is the source. Then one of the options given was ubiquitin. But yeah, ubiquitin kya hota hai? It is found in all eukaryotes. It is a marker of death. Tu marne wale ho. Naseeb mein likha hua hai. Naseeb mein kaisa likha hua hai? Ubiquitin. Ubiquitin will act like a tag. If the cell is senescent, old, about to die, or this protein has to be denatured, then ubiquitin tag usko dal diye to, this is ready to get proteolysis, undergo proteolysis. That's how the God has created. Ubiquitin is a mark of death, is what you have to remember. What are structural proteins, doctor? Fibrous proteins are all structural. Proteins of the skin, cartilage, nail, like collagen, proteoglycans, they are all structural proteins. The distribution of the affected and the normal allele in a community, based on the probability, what is that formula? That's called Hardy Weinberg's law. Frequency of homozygous dominant genotype. Typically, frequency of homogeneous dominant genotype P square plus frequency of heterozygous genotype 2PQ plus frequency of homozygous recessive genotype Q square is equal to 1. This is called Hardy Weinberg's principle, is what you need to remember. Now, which chemotherapeutic agent you don't want to give in chronic renal insufficiency? Come on, punch your answers, doctor. Wake up, wake up. Neend se jago, mere deshe vasiyo. Neend se jago, our answer karo. Chronic renal insufficiency, way, what is to be avoided? Come on, punch your answers, doctor. Let me check how many of you, of you are awake. So, Jima. Is saying cisplatin. RDP also saying cisplatin. Cardiotoxic medico. Wah, kya naam hai bhai? Uh, Nalini Kant Naidu is saying cisplatin. But yeah, so cisplatin is used in testicular cancer, ovarian cancer, lung cancer, esophagus cancer, gastric cancer, and solid tumor cancers. Cisplatin, Waldix, emesis. Cisplatin, nephrotoxicity. Cisplatin, peripheral neuropathy. Cisplatin, ototoxicity. You should not forget these four important adverse effects of cisplatin is what you need to remember. Jump fibrogel. Why do you use it in triglyceridemia? Because it activates lipoprotein lipase. So you should know the mechanism of action of fibrates, jump fibrogen. It inhibits the triglyceride synthesis. Triglyceride is predominantly carried by VLDL. So it reduces VLDL release. It increases lipoprotein lipase activity which catabolizes the chylomicrons in VLDL. Chylomicrons are the predominant exogenous triglyceride carrier. VLDL is the predominant endogenous triglyceride carrier. Yet dono ko Marne wale hota hai lipoprotein lipase. It increases the activity of that fibrates. The fibrates increase the catabolism of triglyceride rich VLDL. So that it decreases the serum VLDL level. It also increases HDL by improving ApoA1 and ApoA2 synthesis. Here's what you need to remember. So all your statin, betin and all that, it is useful for cholesterol. But for triglycerides, what are you going to do? Fibrates. Fibrates have a role to manage the triglycerides. 
What is the most likely cause of anemia and elevated bilirubin and LDH levels? Anemia, elevated bilirubin and LDH, both liver dysfunction and anemia, ribavirin. So ribavirin lead to transient dose dependent anemia. It lead to elevated bilirubin. It is contraindicated in pregnancy. So these are the important points that you need to remember. Gynecomastia is caused by cementity. Enterobacter UTI. You treat it by giving imipenam. So you should know imipenam, mirapenam, etrapenam, doripenam. They are all what bidilact men by our age. They inhibit the cell wall synthesis. They have action on gram positive, gram negative, and aerobes. On everything, they have an action, carbapenems. Vincristin is specific for which phase of cell cycle, doctor? It is specific for the young phase. So, here I want to re emphasize to you what is the classification of the antineoplastic drugs? What is their mechanism of action? Everything. Today only you have to go back to the pharmacology part of the video library on the online MBBS.com and do a revision. Just give me one minute break, doctor. I'll just rejoin you. Yeah, one minute. You also take a little break. Go to the kitchen. Have a uh, coffee picked up and then rejoin the discussion. Just one to two minutes break.
Now, doctor, welcome back. Cell specific, cell cycle specific drugs, they mainly act on the dividing cells. Cell cycle non specific drugs, they act on both dividing as well as the resting cells. Then we have hormonal agents, that is how the general classification. Among cell cycle specific drugs, you have anti metabolites like methotrexate, 5 fluorouracil, antibiotics like bleomycin, vinca alkaloids like vinblast and vincristin. So, you should remember anti metabolites, antibiotics, vinca alkaloids, they are all cell cycle specific. But as remaining are non specific, like alkylating agent, cyclophosphamide bisulfan. Antibiotics like doxorubicin, donorubicin. So, whereas bleomycin is cell cycle specific, doxorubicin, dono are cell cycle non specific. Then, cisplatin is also cell cycle non specific. Then, you have hormonal like glucocorticoids, prednisolone, and gonadal hormonal antagonists like tamoxifen, flutamide, etc. Now, you should know. G2 phase, M phase, G1 phase, G0 phase, S phase. That's how you divide. S is synthetic phase. Obviously, anti metabolites, topo isomerase to inhibitors, they are S phase. Whereas porophyllotoxins, topo isomerase to inhibitors, they are G2 phase. Vinca alkaloids and taxanes, they are M phase. And uh, Typically, you have nitrosourea, anti tumor antibiotics, alkylating agents, etc. They are all cell cycle non specific. Okay, so this is how you broadly classify. So don't forget ribocosib, ebima sib, palbociclib. They are all. G1 to S phase transition inhibitor, they are also called CDK46 inhibitor. Then S phase specific drugs are cytosine, hydroxyurea, ironotecton, topoticon, you have to be very sure about. So I leave all this literature doctor instead of reading out for you. But I want to tell you, Mere Pyare Deshwasio, is go, is PowerPoint slide को दिमाग के अंदर बिठाना essential है बहुत खटोरता के साथ पढ़ना पड़ेगा ठीक है so you have to master this table doctor फुटवा ले लो कुछ भी करो मगर master करो that is the whole purpose of मुरली परिवार to remind you every day okay now you bring more number of your friends doctor so so afternoon is a little odd time, but still uh, my plan is morning, evening. Morning, need PG, FMG style, the 60 questions. Topic wise, 20,000 MCQs of the past uh, 15 years of All India AIDS, PGI live discussion, topic wise. Evening, we'll have USMLE step one, step two style uh, question bank uh, discussion. Okay, so please bring your friends also. Tell them. Dr. Murli Bharadwaj said that there is an unemployed MD general medicine available who will study for 3-4 hours with us every Sunday grant us content and you have to become the top ranker and take the seat until you have to 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 take the seat Now, nitroglycerin, what is the mechanism of action doctor? It increases cyclic GMP levels fundamentally, nitrates Redman syndrome, vancomycin, anaphylactoid reaction, release of a histamine leading to excessive vasodilatation and Redman syndrome. You should not forget. Brother, now, octreotide, how does it function? It is similar to the action of sovetostatin, fundamentally. Which anti tumor clear medication cause an increase in seizures? If somebody already is on anti-epileptic. Rifamsin is a P450 inducer. That 
that will make anti epileptic get metabolized and ineffective that will lead to precipitation of seizures so if i'm saying all p415 induces inhibitors induces inhibitors list banaye kya ab bhi banana aaj hi banana doston ke sath baith ke revision karna without that there is no question paper class 1 anti rhythmics typically the class 1 anti rhythmics they have a greater effect on cardiac tissue which is depolarizing frequently that's very important not on every cardiac conduction tissue but only that which is depolarizing more frequently that way they are less pro arrhythmic in nature class 1 mein hota hai class 1 ke quinidin they lead to sodium channel blockade and increase the effective refractory period class 1b hota hai lidocaine they have a weak sodium channel blockade and they decrease the effective refractory period class 1c hota hai flecainide they have once more a strong sodium channel blockade they don't affect the effective refractory period this is very important for you to remember not वन ए क्या करेगा वन बी क्या करेगा वन सी क्या करेगा डिफरेंसेस क्या है जिसके वजह से ईआरपी इज नॉट इफेक्टिव वन सी के वजह से देर इज नो इफेक्ट ऑन द इफेक्टिव रिफ्रैक्टिव पीरियड वन ए इंक्रीजेस वन बी डिक्रीजेस क्विनिडिन प्रोकेनेमाइड इज वन ए लिडोकेन मेक्सिलिडिन इज वन बी फ्लकेनेड प्रोपाफिनोन इज वन सी दिस इज वन टेबल फ्रीज करना फुटबॉल लेना ठीक है एंड गो बैक टू ऑनलाइन एमबीबीएस डॉट कॉम विद लर्न टू डू द रिविजन ऑफ एंटी रिथमिक्स मुझे ड्रग इज एम फेज स्पेसिफिक केमोथेरापिक एजेंट विच इज यूज टू ट्रीट द मेटास्टैटिक कोरियो कार्सिनोमा विन ब्लास्टिंग राइट सो यू शुड नो व्हाट आर द वेरियस रेजिम्स ऑफ कोरियो कार्सिनोमा कोरियो कार्सिनोमा इमैगो रेजिम एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा so wind blast 30 year old man with hiv develops cmv retinitis how will you confirm the diagnosis of cmv we confirm by using a technique of immunofluorescence of the tear infected tissue culture fibroblasts right immunofluorescence that is how you do the diagnosis of cmv retinitis immunofluorescence of the tear infected tissue culture fibroblasts very typical of the um, cmv is what you should remember both the fungi and viruses which it is infected has activity on both the fungi and viruses chlorine chlorine if chlorine is an option chlorine is the answer chlorine in the options chlorine is the answer tv in the options tv is the answer please don't forget some uh, thumb rules of neat pg entrance exam integrated child development services scheme was launched in 1975 which mantri ke haath mein hai wo ministry of women and child development extra chlorine which is added to water during super chlorination how will you remove it we use the sodium thiosulfate to remove it once more the idea is if you have done this question wrong in the online test you have a report preventive medicine how many questions you did wrong what topics you have done wrong then you need to go back and then usko zara maramat karna padega learning gaps ko right now step fells are associated with dracunculasis step fells sling psychrometer it will talk about the humidity in the air percentage of humidity in the air you will know by sling psychrometer rupture of the tympanic membrane leads to permanent deafness at what level of the decibels doctor at 160 decibels rupture of the tympanic membrane will occur telangana is most prevalent in telangana actually this was earlier undivided in andhra pradesh but the correct answer would be option would be telangana
crescentic glomerulonephritis is most often associated with Pionka. So you should know crescentic glomerulonephritis is divided into type 1, type 2, type 3. Please don't forget. Type 1, type 2, type 3. Type 1, anti-glomerular basement membrane, antibody associated RPGN. 95% crescents. What is crescent? Crescent histopathologically is what? In the Bowman's capsule, you have one visceral epithelium, parietal epithelium, parietal epithelial cell proliferation. Parietal epithelial cells, when they undergo proliferation excessively, that lead to crescent formation. So, 95% crescents in anti-glomerular basement membrane disease, good pasture and uh, um, anti-GBM disease. Type 2, immune complex RPGM, <coughs> 20 to 50 percent crescents. Like SLE, IgA nephropathy, cryoglobulonemic vasculitis. Type 3, type 3 hota hai, posse immune glomerulonephritis. Matlab immunocomplexes banega nahi, isme posse immune. Idiopathic crescentic glomerulonephritis, vaginous glandular metastasis, then microscopic polyangitis, they all come under posse immune glomerulonephritis type 3. So in all these things, what is the common thing? Histologically, when you look, there is a parietal epithelial cell proliferation which is called crescent glomerulonephritis is what you need to remember. A mother notices that her five-month-old infant has an enlarging, enlarging left testicle. A serum HCG is normal, but alpha protein, alpha beta protein is markedly elevated. What is the likely diagnosis? Yolk sac tumor typically is associated with increased alpha fetal protein is what you need to remember. Why few people have increased the sensitivity to ethanol? Which gene it is associated? Aldehyde dehydrogenase polymorphism will give increased sensitivity to ethanol. 50% of patients have a genetic polymorphism in the aldehyde dehydrogenase that affects the alcohol metabolism is what you need to remember. Jogren syndrome. What is that? Autoantibodies, doctor. Antidote, antilla, autoantibodies. Vigilance granular metastasis is associated with, it is associated with Sianka Vigilance. Sianka. Why do you give 5 alpha reductase inhibitor like finasteride in the management of prostatic hyperplasia? Because it prevents testosterone becoming dihydrotestosterone. Dihydrotestosterone is the active form which leads to the enlargement of the prostate. That's the reason we want it less. Hence, we prevent the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone in the management of the BPH to decrease the size of the prostate. Is what you need to remember. Decrease the risk of breast cancer. Multiparity. Bound bache paida hai to dadi ba ko breast cancer ka risk kam hota hai. Nulli parity increases the risk. Multiparity decreases the risk of breast cancer. Is what you need to remember. 42 year old runner from partner participating in Asia Games. Presence complaining of muscle pain. Dark urine. No RBCs. Creatinine is elevated. What is the most likely possibility? Athlete, runner, there will be muscle breakdown leading to myoglobinuria, leading to renal shutdown, leading to typically acute tubular necrosis is what you need to remember. So dark urine without RBCs, high serum creatinine, ATN because of rhabdomyolysis should be your diagnosis. With regard to seminomas, what is wrong? So typically, seminoma is infiltrated by lymphocytes. It can express HCG. 
then it is not a sex cord tumor, definitely not. And uh, these are all the fundamental truths. Okay, doc. So we took almost one and a half hour to complete 100 MCQs in our grand test doctor. At this rate, we take three to four hours. At least we will try to discuss 200 questions. Next time onwards, at least 200 to 50 questions. Uh, we will try to discuss after the test is over. So thank you very much for uh, participating in this wonderful discussion. And uh, every day, morning we will try to take what is the convenient time in the morning which is best doctor please let me know right i i think two to four is a good time is a good time i'll give you 60 questions topic wise classified from the last 15 years of all india aims pgi jipma uh, question bank topic wise 953 topics we will take every day 60 65 70 questions i'll give you like a quiz uh, please do the solve it like a PPT slideshow every 10 seconds a slide will be moving punctual answers and get uh, a thought process then I'll come for discussion morning we'll do like that 60 to 100 questions we will discuss evening USMLE style clinical vignette based a couple of hours we will have a discussion and every Sunday grand test and a discussion right so thank you very much also tell your friends to come and join Online MBBS.com video library. Good evening and have a good time. Thank you.